friends. So I'd ask, phones away until I'm done going over stuff. You got, please. This is that phones away until I'm done going over stuff. No. All right. So we went over. We did one eleven. The first problem yesterday, correct? Correct. Okay. Then let's see. So the second problem was that the one about soda companies? Yes. All right. So we're good. Phones away until I'm done. If you don't like the policy, get out. Is that what you say your question? Yeah. We'll be just taking phones. Phones away until you're gonna wear your earbuds, just get the heck out of my classroom. Okay? You're that disrespectful. Go away. Sorry. You're good. I'm actually my fault. Tripping all over. <laughs> I have 100 20 jackets. So it's okay if I smash this before. Dude, you can drink sodas all day long and Red Bulls. Monsters. All right, soda companies offer perform taste test to on new products to see if they should release a new product. The new flavor being tested, a company determines that if the average score scale 1 to 10 is higher than 8.5, then they will release new product as a test in certain cities. 20 people are hired as taste testers. Assume that the average score is 8.78. With a standard deviation 1.1, is, is a strong evidence that the product reached their threshold? All right, so, so hypothesis, what do you think? We'll call mu equal to 8.5, less than, greater than? Equals. And then our alternative would be they wanted greater. Ooh, greater than 8.5. A question for you. Are you wrong if you did that? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. above it's already equal, so so just watch out. All right, so the Greek letter mu is the average taste score of a new soda. So I think how many people do they 20 people. So do I use a standard deviation or do I have to do a standard error? They gave us a standard deviation, right? They said the standard deviation is 1.1. So do I use, use the standard deviation for my curve or do I use the standard error to make the new standard deviation? What do you think? Would you use Hmm. What do you think? I like that. It's a good question. It's it's a tough one to decipher. I mean, I could easily write, do my normal curve, have an eight point five in the middle, add one point one, add point one point one, minus one point one, minus one one point one. But we have twenty people. So does the standard deviation apply to all or to the sample? So they're they're saying that twenty people are hired as taste testers. Assume the average score is eight point seven eight with a standard deviation of one point one. Is it strong evidence that this project reached the threshold? I think we need to use a standard error. I think I think what they're I think what they're trying to say is this is almost one of those things where it's not an alpha score, but it's kind of one of those things where a company, like let's say you're going to invest billions of dollars to pr create something new. Do you want to be really correct on it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there was a there was a soda that came out called Pepsi Clear. Oh, that tasted nothing like Pepsi. Yeah, it was exactly. Like it was clear. Yeah, it was clear. It was like Sprite. You could see right through it. What did it taste like? 
I, I, I'll tell you, it did not last long. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it had, it had a, in my opinion, it had a horrible aftertaste. I mean, I remember I went and got it going, oh, that's kind of cool, because it was promoted. Pepsi Clear. It didn't say that it was going to be a different flavor. So I remember I got, got a can of it. It stayed on the market for very little time. It was a total flop. Pepsi missed the boat. But Pepsi was, I think they were, they were trying to do is they wanted to compete with Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola and Sprite are owned. 7-Up is its own thing. Pepsi didn't have a non-caffeinated clear beverage at the time. So that's what they were trying to compete with. But it was misled. It was mis. It was poorly tasting, in my opinion. So I think I think we really want to find the standard error, because I I think we want to really be correct about this. And we'll use the standard deviation or standard error as our standard deviation, and that that'll be like we're more concise on this. So I'm going to do the 1.1 divided by root 20, and I think if my math was right. I think this comes out to 0.25 for my standard error. So, Scarab, is there a specific, like, is there a way to tell what the standard deviation or standard error? Or is it something where you just kind of have to assume? Like, so, I think it can be argued both ways. Mm -hmm. But I think in this case, think about, we're not talking about, you know, a small situation. We're talking about you're pretending you're working at a corporation and you're making a huge, you're going to try and make a huge uh, decision on something. Right. I would, but I, I think you could argue it both ways that, yeah, I want to use the standard deviation, but I think the argument against you could be how, how precise you want to be. Because if I do a standard Deviation of 1.1, 1.1 is not that much bigger than 0.25. I get it. I think we want to be right. I think we, I think if we, if we were this, you know, we were be making the concoction of soda and we're going to go to our, our stakeholders saying, hey, we're going to create a whole new soda. It's going to cost us this and it's going to be great. I would say those people that, that made the Pepsi clear, I don't know if they're still working for Pepsi. <laughs> so, so, but, I, but I think, it, I, and that's what I'm trying to, trying to emphasize a little bit with the stats, is, is statistics an exact mathematics? And the answer is no, because you could argue it both ways real easily. But if you were truly doing something. Especially, you know, like if you're talking about some sort of medication. Okay. We were all subjected to a new medication, a new vaccine, just with this COVID. Were there, were there drug companies that produced a vaccine that was not used? Yeah. But those drug companies are not out of business. Why? They make other drugs. That's one. Every drug company out there has the federal government to applaud for this. You know, a lot of people said, oh man, they made this too quickly. What is it called? Warp drive? Is that what they called it? Yeah, it was like Operation Warp Drive. Something like that, yeah. I mean, obviously we had something in place that we had no idea, and there's all kinds of speculations about COVID, where it came from. I mean, do you remember when it first came out saying, yeah, someone ate bat soup? <laughs> remember that? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I got, you know, and I'm not a great thinker. <laughs> but I kind of stepped back going, you know, human beings have been on this planet for kind of a long time. I doubt that someone said, hey, Let's take this bat and make soup out of it. And no one's ever done that before. I kind of looked at it that way. I called, what a bunch of malarkey. You mean to tell me that somebody ate this bat soup with a, an animal that no one has ever eaten ever, 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 ever? And then COVID came out of it? So I kind of looked at it like that. I kind of laughed at it going, they're just 
trying to either mislead or going, we have no idea where this came from, or who knows. But the reason why Operation Warp Drive happened so quickly was the federal government went to the drug company and said, we need a vaccine now. And I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we want you to create a vaccine. We want you to create all of the vaccine vials for it. And even if it's not approved, the federal government will pay you for all of it. <coughs> Can you, that? Can you imagine you own a company and you're bidding for something and the government says Ethan, you're building a house. We need you to build us 600 million houses. We might not sell, but we'll pay for all of them. Ethan's company's building houses. I don't know if that's what you're going to do, but I'm just saying. Sound like a good idea? I mean, the federal government spent huge money. The World Health Organization spent huge money. Boy, if we would have caught on to this, we should have just all gotten together last year or two years ago. Said, hey, let's get down to the chemistry lab and just make a whole bunch of toxic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> From high school. Yeah. Just stir up some high like school math class and cook stuff with COVID vaccines. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's in it? Oh, it's good stuff. <laughs> Inside. Well, 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 I tell you, he, as a little kid, here's what the scary thing is. Do you all know when we are allowed to find out exactly the ingredients that are in any of the COVID vaccines? 2099. Are you serious? Oh my God. For real? That's kind of cool. So, so honestly, friends, if we knew that we had until 2099, we Probably could have said, we got Cherry Creek High School vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we're, we all own a different island. Yeah. And we're like, that was great. Remember we made all those files? <laughs> yeah. Where did we get the water from for it? The toilet? Yeah. <laughs> that didn't work, but dude, we got paid. We made 600 billion of these vials, and we got paid $20 each. That's pretty cool. That's why it happened so quickly. So, so do you think when COVID came out, and I, and I know I'm steering this in a different direction, but I want to just, I'm trying to have fun with it because I want you to be that thinker as well. Again, I'm not a great thinker, but I just, I have, I have just enough knowledge to make me dangerous and a jerk. <laughs> okay. And I don't have enough to support it, though I can throw some statistical terms at it where some be like, He's right. Do you want to know the, the person that I stop? Well, I usually ignore this person, but then I usually then come back on this person and make it look really silly. It's the person who starts growing percent with percent with percent with percent. Well, you know that 15% of people all, all do this, and of that 15%, 71% of those people do this, and you know there's 78% who do this. Oh, really? I heard that 48% of people do this, and I just make up, start doing percent, 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 because what's a percent of a percent of a percent of a percent? Tiny. But the guy who started, or the person who starts saying, talking, trying to influence you using percents, I don't listen to him. And it's kind of where statistics can go. Statistics is used to manipulate to get you or somebody to say, I think that's right. And, and where it's goofy is the term that we started using four or five weeks ago, I don't remember the exact date. We failed to reject the null. Oh. Like seriously, has that has, if if I put that in an English paper when I was in high school, if I use the words fail to reject, there's gonna be a red mark on it. The English teachers are gonna rip it apart. Just, just for fun, will you do just humor me with this? If you have an open time in your English class, ask your English teacher. <clears throat> say 
A term used in statistics is fail to reject the null and ask them what that would mean. Now, they might not know what a null hypothesis is. And they, but just, and I'm curious what your English teacher is going to say. I want to know what your English teacher is going to say about fail to reject. And GI asked him why he took phones away. He weren't here when I said it. So, so I, I'm just I'm curious because I'm pretty sure your English teacher is going to be like, what? <laughs> so, so, so my. My answer, so here's the hard thing. Let's say I gave you this on a test or quiz. Are you wrong if you chose to use this? Well, if you can support why you're using it, I don't think you're wrong. Are you wrong if you use this? I think it, it just becomes a, a, a matter of you justifying why or why not we should or should not use a certain item. And I think that's important to know. So I'm going to base the rest of this problem based on the standard error. But if you chose to use the standard deviation in place of it, I can't say you're wrong. Okay? Unless you uh, I say, hey, why would you use standard deviation? Oh, well. Just because. Okay? Or be like my kids in Algebra 1. You know, hey, what's 6 times 8? My wait time is, you know, 17 weeks. 6 times 8. I forgot. We'll try it. Six groups of eight or eight groups of six. What do you mean? I. So. So my my point on on this, I'm not. I'm trying to make fun of the situation because because there's easily ways that you can always get the answer correct as long as you conform the argument for or against why or why not something was used, okay? And I, this is a silly, silly type of problem. Like, yeah, we're talking about a soda company. We're talking about Pepsi Clear. And most of you are like, I don't know what you're even talking about. I'm not. No, I don't like that nasty cars with sodas. That makes me feel healthier, you know? Crystal Bar. Crystal Pepsi. Was that what it was? Yeah. Oh, that's a new one. Right? Oh, that's a new one. So, so, so they re <laughs> they didn't learn their lesson. Gotcha. The one that the one that I thought was so funny is many years ago. There is a sweetener called aspartame that people claimed was formaldehyde. Do people think you're Formaldehyde is pretty, pretty distinct. <laughs> well, that's my point. That's my, <laughs> that is my point. That's where I'm trying to. I, you all are thinkers, so. So. Who actually believes that? Kimmy, there's poison in your Starbucks cup. Like it's a plastic, and some people would be like. Your Starbucks is going to give you cancer if you keep drinking it. Exactly, but only if you drink from that type of cup. I, I understand. So less important today is because no one. Well, it's a free for all. Yes and no. Yes and no, because if somebody is leading you to information that I I kind of look at I look at a lot of stuff like this, Ethan. If something is being stated that is a major thing. I'm not talking about, hey, where should we go have lunch today, Burger King or Sonic? It's always Sonic, but um, that's not a major decision. But if, if something is like a life-changing situation, follow the money. Fo follow who is profiting off of it. Yeah, I, I mean, who knows? I mean, that that's the main thing to realize. Who is Who really is going to gain... And I know it's sick and demented to think, are we really that low as a as a situation? I don't know. Yeah. Thirty trillion. Oh, yeah. oh, 30 trillion. Bro, it just keeps growing every day. It does. All right. So hey, 
Yes. Because 8.78 fell here. This is what we found. So even though, okay, so we're assuming, even though we're assuming that the average score is 8.78 with the standard deviation of 1.1, that's still not the average? So basically like this, if you look at the first paragraph, it says, soda companies often perform taste tests on new products to see if they should be released as a new product. If flavor is being tested, the company determines that if the average score, okay, is 8.5. So they're telling us this average. The cut, higher than 8.5. So, 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 so basically, you, you go, you are this person who's in your soda lab, and you're like, ooh, this, this, this. oh, that tastes, taste that. Oh, that tastes pretty good. And then you meet with your board of directors, and your board of directors are like, how much is this going to cost us? And they're going to tell you that it's going to cost billions to do. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to say, you know what? If we do some sort of randomized taste test, that's truly randomized. I'd say if we get a score of 8.5 or higher and a standard deviation of 1.1. So like this was not even founded. It was just, it's almost like they have a benchmark in mind what they want to present. They haven't run um, data to get the 8.5 and the 1.1. They're like trying to say this would be high enough in my, our opinion if we are at 8.5 with a standard deviation of 1.1, that's high enough in our opinion to say, yes, we'll go ahead and spend the money. So they haven't run data yet. They haven't done this thing. They just came up with the idea. I think if we uh, come up with an average of 8.5 out of a scale of 1 to 10 right. or higher, that's going to be good for us. So they haven't run data to do that. They're just... They're just picking an arbitrary thing. They could have said, hey, if we have a taste test of 4.5 with standard deviation, de yeah, standard deviation of 2, that's just like they're coming up with their idea. Okay, so even though it's, so 8.78 is the average of the, the sample size. Uh -huh. So we're just marking down on, that's our p-value? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so basically they're looking at <clears throat> this region here. No, if I was used, if I wanted to use standard deviation, I would have just this would have been uh, nine point six. But that would still be eight point seven five. Because this is what this is what our company says. Hey, this is our benchmark. We. We thought, we think, we've done this in the past, we think that 8.5 or better standard deviation of this, that's going to be good for us, for our company. But we haven't done any data. It's just we're kind of like making it. So, you know, when you create your null and your, your hypothesis, you, and your alternative, you're thinking about, we've seen patterns that have taken place. It's like, you know, if we, we come out of our house at 8 o'clock in the morning and the sun is somewhere in this region to the east, we're going to be able to eventually conclude. I think the sun around 8 o'clock in the morning is over here somewhere. Sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher, depending on the time of year. Now, if we walk out of our house at 8 o'clock in the morning, the sun's now over here, something happened. So, so be, be, because, because of observations that we've made through being a part of a big corporation, and I know the sunrise is a goofy thing, but because you're sitting there going, I, I'm seeing this over and over and over again, I think we can make this choice. So they're 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 picking because of their observations. I'll tell you what, if you did this and it showed this, we're gonna go for it. Okay. So now you're gonna you know only 20 people are sampled so it's pretty low. But yeah <laughs> exactly right. But you ran your random test. If you went back to your corporation and said, hey, you said 8.5 standard deviation of this. Well, we did 20 people. Here's our what we found. And it says in the whole study, I mean, it's probably hundreds of pages, but it's like, how did you randomly select people? I walked through people. Hey, you want to try soda? Yeah. Do you like it? One in 10, how do you think it is? That's not randomly selected. If I'm standing at the outlet of Dillard's at the mall, anyone who comes to me, first 20 people that come to me, that's not a random sample. So you're, you're, you're clearly saying, 
how did I know that I had randomness to have these 20 to do it? And that's part of your report. And then you're presenting to the company saying, we could do this. This is this is in our wheelhouse. Okay. So, and again, the standard error, I would probably choose to go with, but if you chose the standard deviation, think about if this was 9.6 here, where does this 8.78 fall if this is 9.6? Well, it falls over here. So now you're talking about a greater area. So then there's a greater likelihood that you fall within it, but you want to be correct. If your job is on the line, if you're telling your corporation to spend a billion dollars and if it, it flops and you lose your job, that stinks. So it's kind of a cautionary thing. So I think with the normal CDF, we're going to find the p-value from that point. And so I think because our information we found is 8.78, and then we go big number, you know, 100, 1,000, 10,000, it doesn't matter. We go with our original mean, and we go with our standard error, uh, point, uh, 0.25. I think this is going to find us a p-value of 0.131. Okay? So then, what p-value did we, what p-value were we accepting in this two weeks before break? What was a good p-value? What was our benchmark? Do we recover? Third, no. Point, yeah, so it's 5%. So if our p value is greater than 0.5%. And that was four or five sections back. Okay, so this was kind of a benchmark. So now, if, if we have a p value, since p is greater than 0.015, because this is what we found, we can fail to reject the null. Okay, so basically this means we did not find strong evidence that the average taste score of this new soda was greater than 8.78. Okay, we didn't find evidence. evidence of this and that that's a really thing weird thing because th this becomes something you have to go back and remember and that's where this is important Ethan if the p-value is less than 0 0.05 then we find evidence to support the null but if it goes over then we like fail. instantly reject it yeah well we fail to reject Okay, so think about, this is our null. We were equal to 8.5. Our alternative is greater than 8.5. Okay, so this is our null. This is our null exactly. And then here's our alternative going this way from here over. But then we have to realize we have to use that 8.78, which was found through our test. 8.78 fell here. So this basically means we fail to reject the null. Fail to reject. I'm not going to reject my null. Okay? We did not find evidence that was greater than the 8.78. We didn't find evidence of this that's greater than this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, by failing to reject the null, we did not find strong evidence that the average taste score of this new, new soda is greater than 8.78. Why is it not 8.5? We, we could probably throw the 8.5 in there. Okay. I think it would go either way. Okay. So then, for, do we have to put in like the p-value or anything? Like there's a 12% chance that this could be achieved by random chance again? Or whatever, however that works. We could also say that the p value you could say we have a 13.1% chance that if we redid this exact same thing, we get the same results. So, you know, it's just it's just different, but it, it becomes one of those where the hard thing about statistics is you can argue both sides of it and you're both correct. And that 
you know, so it's like, so what's the right answer? On the AP test, I know, I've seen the grading rubric for the AP test, and they'll have this type of problem, and you'll have student answers this way, student answers this way. They're both correct. And one is accepting, one is rejecting. And if you can formulate your evidence, and so, so just imagine if you're in algebra one, x is equal to two, or, you forget about the whole order of operations, x is equal to 17. We have multiple answers? Yeah, if you, but that's, that's where this content of math, in my opinion, is so scary. Because it's influential, and if you have a strong enough influential situation, you know, is the loudest person always the one who's correct? No. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to argue with people because I don't like it because I, I, I start going like kind of goofy stirrup. I just don't like to argue. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 I do know that since we've hit this, you now have enough information to become just a little bit more dangerous in an argumentative state, which is good. Um, be too much.